Hey, what is going on guys? BSD Spear here and welcome to another Destiny 2 video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get the Whisper of the Worm exotic sniper rifle, which can only be obtained through a hidden quest found on IO, only available on the weekend. I'll be going over all the tips and tricks required to get this gun for yourselves, and this is by far the best weapon in the game right now, so I would highly suggest giving this a try. This gun is basically the Destiny 2 version of the Black Spindle from Destiny 1, which was a beast, but now it's back and better than ever. So if you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor and drop a like down below, share this video with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here for more Destiny 2 content. That being said, let's go ahead and get into my guide on how to get the Whisper of the Worm. In the description box below, I'm going to have time stamped uh, the sections for the jumping puzzle slash maze, as well as the combat area. That way, if you just need this guy for one or the other, uh, you're able to do that. Alright, so first things first, as I mentioned before, this hidden quest can only be completed on the weekend, which means from Friday Daily Reset to Monday Daily Reset, this quest will be available. What you need to do is fly into IO, land on the Lost Oasis, and you're gonna have to sit there and wait. What you're looking for is you're waiting for a Taken Blight public event. This public event has to be the Taken Blight one, otherwise uh, the entry for this mission will not be triggered and you can't complete it. Once you're waiting for the public event and it actually does spawn in, you're gonna be looking for a Taken Centurion, which as far as I know, there's only two spawn locations. However, I could only get one in the whole weekend when I was attempting this run. So the two locations, there's one uh, where the flag is for the public event. There's one on the hill, basically out in the open. You can actually see him spawn in from where the flag is. And then the other location, which tends to be the more common location, at least for me, uh, was in the bottom of this tree area. So where the flag is, if you go over to this other tree, if you look at the bottom, it's kind of in this cave a little bit. Uh, you're going to find this Taken Centurion. One of these two spots is where you need to look and you need to go ahead and kill this guy. Once you kill him, he's actually going to spawn a portal over by the flag, over in the middle area of the Lost Oasis, and you need your fire team leader to go ahead and uh, enter that portal, and it's gonna actually take you to the mission itself. Now, I do wanna mention, once you enter the mission, you're gonna have only 20 minutes to complete this, which will consist of a maze slash jumping puzzle, as well as a bunch of rooms you need to clear Ads. So I would highly suggest being as high a level as you, as you can, uh, as this is probably a 380-385 mission, uh, and definitely try to do it with a fire team of three. Now once you go into the portal, it's going to take you into the Lost Sector, and this is where the mission will start. So right off the bat, uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, you want to jump on this rock, and you want to jump up above you to the right. This ledge is actually where you want to go. Uh, and you can walk all the way around, but it honestly is going to take you about 35 to 40 seconds, maybe a minute, to get all the way around through the Lost Sector. But you can jump on the rock and jump straight up. It's definitely going to save you time because any shortcut uh, that you can pull in this maze jumping area is going to be a huge lifesaver. Especially with only 20 minutes on the clock to get to the end. Alright, so once you jump up the ledge and you jump across this little gap to this little hidden ledge, there's going to be this blight you have to shoot. Once you shoot the blight, you can drop down into the hole. Now once you drop down into the hole, you're going to keep running through the tunnel until you get to this part, you'll jump across the gap. And then this is going to be the first kind of checkpoint area that I like to call the red room. Once you enter the red room, what you want to do is you want to jump down to this ledge, crawl and crouch underneath here. And then you're going to jump all the way down here and to the right. You want to try to jump out as far as you can. Because uh, like I said, you want to make sure you can get through this thing quickly. Now the thing you got to watch out for here is there's going to be these walls that move. And they're going to try to push you off as you're going. Once you get far enough to where you can jump to the next ledge, go ahead and do so. Um, and then you're going to jump across the ledge to the other smaller ledge. And then you're going to jump over across one more time. Now once you get over to this ledge, this is going to be the first kind of awkward jump you have to do. You basically want to jump around the corner and there's going to be a ledge you have to jump to, but you really can't see it from where you're standing. Once you jump across this awkward jump, you're going to crouch underneath here and then you're going to be crouching uh, through the moving ball section again in the red room. 
Now the moving wall section, you can actually, if you want to be quick, you can actually uh, crouch past two of these moving blocks, but you need to look for on the wall kind of where they stop. If you want to play it safe, uh, I would suggest just waiting the first time. Now on the last one, this is the one you really have to watch out for. Uh, as you basically have to start walking as it's coming in, uh, that way you can make sure you get through in enough time. Now once you get across, you want to go ahead and jump into the middle of these two uh, circles, and you can go ahead and do another jump thing, or awkward jump around the corner, uh, and you can get past this. Now the last section of the red room has this uh, little brick elevator. You want to go ahead and jump on here. And also beware there's going to be a uh, brick that sticks out that tries to block you. So as you're going up the elevator, go ahead and jump and you're going to want to hit the ledge above you. Now this next section is going to be the awkward diagonal room and kind of jump to the left and then jump to the right. You can get past it actually pretty quickly. All right, so this is going to be the chasm room as I like to call it. Basically, you're going to see these red ledges you have to jump to. Uh, you want to time it right because these blighted walls uh, are going to try to push of you off each time you jump to one of them. Also, once you get past the second one, there's going to be a sniper behind you, uh, which is going to prevent you from standing still. So you want to keep moving. Uh, pretty much if you just keep going and you don't stop, as long as your timing's right, you should be able to save yourself with an extra jump. Uh, but you want to jump uh, from one ledge to the other. Uh, until you get to the end then the end there's going to be this hole in the wall as well as a sniper up and to the left So just watch out for him. All right once you get to the ledge go ahead and enter There's gonna be one other small gap You have to jump across and you'll get to the next room, which I like to call uh, The tunnel room now in the tunnel room You're gonna want to jump uh, over to the right and you're gonna go as far down as you can and the upper rightmost tunnel is the one you want to jump through. Now once you drop down the tunnel, you're going to enter this big white room people like to call the grass room. There's a huge shortcut here you want to make sure you do. As soon as you enter the grass room, uh, you want to turn a 180 and drop down, and you want to look at this light. Now if you look in the corner, you basically want to run past the light, and there's this little chasm, this little passageway uh, you can kind of crouch into. Uh, and this is going to be a massive shortcut next area. Then you're going to want to go straight, jump across, and go to the right. And then you're going to come to the next room, which I call the round room. Now in the round room, you want to jump onto the ledge that goes all the way around to the left. And there's going to be another awkward jump you have to jump. Uh, but you basically jump away from the ledge and then jump back towards it. And there's going to be this ledge on the left side you want to jump to. Now once you jump to it, if you look down below you, there's going to be a lighted passageway. This is where you're going to want to jump to. Uh, it is a bit awkward because of how far you're falling from, uh, but you basically just want to make sure you don't hit the wall in front of you. You want to stop yourself right before you hit the ledge. Now once you do get to this part, you're in the last room before the actual mission. Uh, you want to jump across this awkward ledge and go crouch to go underneath. Go to the left, stick to the ledge, and then you're going to jump across the room and up to the right. Uh, then you're going to run all the way down the hall and turn to the right. And then this is where you're going to drop down to the actual mission part. All right. And then this is going to be the start of the actual mission. This is going to be where you actually kill enemies. Um, but that is the jumping puzzle slash maze. Uh, that is a good, you know, five, six, seven minutes of the run, depending how quick you can get through it. Like I said, uh, the quicker you can master this path and get through it the quickest, it's going to give you more time to complete the actual mission uh, towards the end. Now, once you get into the mission part, there is a few things you need to be wary of. There's going to be a bunch of blights in the rooms. There's going to be uh, blighted walls uh, that's going to push you in directions you don't want to go. And the enemies are going to be extremely tanky and shielded. Uh, so you want to make sure you have some good ad clearing supers and ad clearing weapons. Shotguns work really well. Rockets can work well as long as you don't blow yourself up. Um, Arc Strider works really well. Hammers works really well as well. Also, make sure you have uh, coordinate your um, elemental burns for your secondary weapons. Uh, I would suggest having one person with Arc, one person with Solar, and one person uh, with Void. Now, each room you want to basically prioritize certain enemies. Uh, so what I do is as an Arc Strider, I'm going to pop my super and I try to get this knight up here on the ledge. As soon as I clear this knight on the ledge, clear some of the ads on the ground, and start working to the ledge to the right. Uh, as soon as you clear out all the ads up top, then you can clear the ads on the bottom. 
Now one thing to note, in each room you don't have to kill the blights, you just have to kill all of the enemies, but you do have to kill every single enemy. Every now and then there's going to be a wizard or a knight or an acolyte that's kind of hiding, but make sure you kill every single enemy. Once you do kill all the enemies, there's going to be a blight in the back of the room that spawns. You can go ahead and destroy this and this is going to take you to the next room. Now this next room is very small and very crowded and it can be very annoying. This is where shotguns will really come in handy. Also, if you do have a tether, this would be a great place to pop it because you can tether and shoot one rocket and pretty much kill all the ads in this small passageway. Also, you want to watch out for the walls as they're going to push you around into the enemies and it's super annoying. Once you kill all the ads in this room, it's going to spawn another blight that's going to take you to the next passageway once you kill it. So this next room is probably one of the more time consuming rooms. Uh, the path that I like to take is over to the right. So right here in front of you, there's going to be a bunch of ads. Uh, you want to clear out these ads and uh, as best as you can. Arc Strider is really good to pop here, but I would wait until you can clear out these first ads right next to you and then go down the right passageway. There's going to be a Taken Wizard you have to kill with a Void Shield um, and then right above her is going to be a Taken Knight. Now if you can pop your Arc Strider, you can kill that wizard and jump up to the ledge to the right. Also you got to watch out for the Hobgoblins in the back of the room. But the bright path is definitely the easier way to go because if you go to the left, all of the snipers on the other side have clear sights on you. Now you can destroy the blights to give you a little bit more uh, sight to see, but in my opinion I think it's a waste of time and you can do perfectly fine just running through the blights. Uh, killing all of the enemies now once you kill all the enemies on the right side You want to go ahead and get the knights across the room that would be on the left side And once you kill all the knights on the right and the left and all the enemies are just in the middle There's also going to be this wizard that likes to hide inside this blight down on the bottom You also have the acolytes in the middle of the room that are going to spawn the acolytes eyes So just make sure you clear out every single one of them once you clear all the ads in this room, it's going to spawn a blight in the back of the room, which is going to be leading you to the next room. Now this room is very annoying, so once you clear this blight, there's going to be two snipers in front of you uh, that are kind of above you and force you to peek up. Uh, but also, behind you in a couple seconds will spawn two centurions that basically push you into the room. So what you want to do is see if you can get one of the snipers, turn around, kill the centurions real quick with shotguns or whatever else. And once you kill the centurions, then it's going to make it a lot easier. If you fail to kill the centurions right off the bat, they will push you in the room and it's very annoying and very frustrating. Now once you kill the centurions and you're able to kill the other sniper up top, the rest in the room is scions. So just pick them off with scout rifles and you're good to go. Then the blight in the floor is going to open up, destroy the blight, and you can now enter the boss room. Now once you enter the boss room, there's a couple different strategies in place. We found this was actually the easiest, and when we start carrying people through this mission, this is the method that we're going to teach people to do. So when you get to the boss room, what we try to do is destroy the front two blights, so the front right one and the front left one. What that does, it's going to spawn all of the majors, uh, the Taken Centurions, Taken Knights, uh, and once you kill all of the majors, that's what's actually going to spawn the bosses. There's three bosses that you have to kill, uh, but you want to coordinate your supers, your rockets, all that stuff. Uh, I wouldn't use all of your supers because you're going to need to do a lot of DPS on the bosses as well. And try to save a melting point if you can. However, if you're just getting melted completely over and over again, it's worth just popping your super and wiping them all out. Uh, than to keep dying and wasting more time. Now once you spawn all of the bosses, there's going to be one on the left, one on the right, and one on the middle. I would suggest taking out the middle one first or the right one. The right one is going to be more annoying because he's going to launch grapes at you, uh, but the captain is also going to shoot those uh, darkness orbs at you as well. So what we'd like to do, if you have a super, go ahead and coordinate it with melting point, um, EP shotgun, all of that kind of stuff, but you want to basically all coordinate on the same boss. Now once you go in for damage uh, on a super, you go ahead and do that. If everyone dies or your super runs out, you want to fall back to the back of the room where you drop down. Uh, back here is where you want to actually stand as you're going to get the most out of your weapons. So if you have scout rifles, Polaris Lance does really well. Also the Mananan uh, does really well, Nameless Midnight. Any scout rifle with explosive rounds of some sort is going to be fantastic. 
Basically, all you want to do is sit in the back of the room and just keep firing at them. As soon as somebody gets a super, somebody gets a melting point, something like that, that's when you want to go in and coordinate your attacks. Other than that, sitting in the back of the room is going to be the best strategy. If you do already have the Whisper of the Worm sniper rifle, this is a great time to use it. Uh, basically, if you get three shots, it's going to give you infinite ammo if you get headshots, and it does a crap ton of damage, especially if you can get someone to melting point uh, the boss you're shooting at. Also, empowering rifts or rally barricades are helpful here as they're going to keep your reload uh, keep going and buff your damage with the empowering rift. Now, once you're able to kill all three bosses within the time limit left, uh, you're able to actually get the Whisper of the Worm exotic sniper rifle. That's all you have to do. Uh, it's basically a guaranteed weapon drop, but that is the end of the guide on how to get the Whisper of the Worm's exotic sniper rifle. If I could wrap this whole guide up into a few tips on how to complete this the easiest, uh, tip one would definitely be to uh, master the jumping puzzle slash maze. That's going to give you the most time to actually defeat the enemies. Uh, two would be to make sure you get revives. And three, when you get to the boss room, sit in the back of the room with scout rifles or sniper rifles. So those are my top three tips. This is my guide on how to get Whisper of the Worm. And hopefully this guide helps you guys out. If it did, be sure to do me a favor, drop a like down below. Uh, share this video with your friends so we can help everyone get their Whisper of the Worms. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you guys in the next one.